Hello everyone, welcome back to one other episode on my channel. So in these videos we are discussing about GraphQL, right? So remember we did one video about to introduce GraphQL and second video to discuss about how to create a GraphQL server, right? In last video we created GraphQL server and we exposed the schema and we discussed what the schema is. If you missed those videos, make sure you go back and watch those videos before you jump into this. To today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create a thing called resolver and what is the resolver and how we can uh, expose data through the resolver, right? So uh, before we dig into this, just make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed yet and also make sure you share these videos on your social media so other people who are interesting will find this content, okay? So let's start from where we stopped uh, in the last video, right? Let's make sure this is it's still uh, you can run this okay so it's working so let's make sure still we have our playground running okay so this is okay, it looks like it's working and okay so we have everything is ready right so everything up and running as it was in, in our last video okay in last video we discussed we need to complete three things right so not last video even from the first video we explained in a graphql server we need to do two things in order to function right because graphql service is empty server first thing we need to tell what are we are going to expose right what we are going to expose so here we says query we are exposing a query query what we are exposing employees and what employees looks like we says it's an employee type array all right then we need to tell what the employee looks like right so we are saying here we have a first name last name designation department and uh, near the city and and also an id right so now the third thing we need to tell graphql server to this employee's query to get the employee array how we resolve it right this is the important part we need to tell graphql server how to resolve the data right remember so GraphQL do not have any data. That is a misconception, right? We need to find the data, right? So this is what we are going to do. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, write a resolver, right? Um, okay. So here, right? For this time, I'm going to just uh, uh, return hard-coded one first. Then I'm going to return data from a data file. Then eventually we are going to move it down to database and the rest services as well, right? Okay. So here, I'm going to create object, right? So what is I'm going, what is this resolver belongs to? This is a query, okay? So, and then we need to tell what this query is going to return. So this is my employee's query resolver, right? So employee's query resolver. So now here, you can write anything you want. Right, you can write anything you want, right? So this can be you are reading a, fi a text file and get these find these employees, or you can um, uh, send API call, REST API call and get these queries. You may talk to other GraphQL server and get these employees. You may uh, talk to file system and uh, like FTP server or somewhere you download it. You can do anything within this, and you need to somehow find the employees and return this. Okay. First, I'm trying to do some like step by step you to understand. I'm doing some little things which can cause errors and then uh, eventually go uh, from there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell, I'm going to return an object, right? That object just has a message, okay? Hello GraphQL, right? So this will not work. Right, I'm going to explain you step by step why it is not working and how we can make it work, right? So I'm going to save this, right? So there is no errors on saving, okay? So when I go back here, if I refresh this, so now my GraphQL schema will show, okay, I'm returning this query, query type is employee, right? So now I can like, uh, I can use this, this uh, playground to query this. So I'm going to query, Okay, so here what I'm going to query, I'm going to query employees, right? Also, I need to tell what are the things I need on the employee, right? I need to uh, like first name and last name. Okay, this is what I'm going to ask, right? 
So when I run this query, it will come employees null. Right? It come employees as a null. Okay. Let's see something like this. I'm going to return all the because I return the message, right? So I'm going to ask it's a message. Now when I return this, it says me error. Because if you go to the schema, schema don't have something called message. Right? So that's why it says no 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 no. I cannot return something called message. So I go back to the first name again. Okay, I'm going to first name, right? Run again. So now it's come null, of course, because this don't have a first name, right? So I go back here and I change this to first name. See what happened now, right? Okay, go back here, I change it to first name, right? I'm returning first name, but name is a graph, uh, hello graph queue, that's fine. So now when I return this, okay, let me do refresh. Right, so now if I recall, uh, run this, still it says error. Okay, fine. So now, what happens here? Right, we define the resolver, but, but we did not tell GraphQL server, hey, use this resolver to uh, get your data, right? So how I can do that, I'm going to set this back to message, right? As I said, I'm going to do some few things wrong in order to get you to have a strong understanding, right? Okay, so still in the same position. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to tell here, when you use this, make sure you get the resolvers as well, right? So we give data source to or else how how this employee query is resolved that instruction we feed into server when it start okay so now server started again so now I'll go back here and i'm going to query this oops it's broken like right? so far at least it gave null but now it's broken okay so now it says uh, expected iteratable but did not find for one feed okay makes sense right why? Because here we are saying we are exposing employee array, but here we are giving just an object. Okay. So let's convert this to an array. Okay. Right. So now save this. Okay. So now run again. Now again, first name comes null. Okay. So now let's ask again. So since we are returning message, will now this time it work? No, it won't work. Why? Because schema. Uh, don't define the message right so again let define first name and get it it's not so now what we are going to do is we are going to change this to first name okay to make it sense I'm going to call here John okay I'm going to set as a John right so now let's come back here and run this now I get my John okay now I get the John here okay so now you understand what happened so now we are not returning last name, right? So here, and if I get this, no, last name is not. So keep in mind, you can have a hundred fields defined on your schema. That doesn't matter. It resolve only the data you providing for those field names. Okay. So you can have uh, any number of fields. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take my uh, this uh, data, right? So the, in last video, I explained this file. So employee uh, JSON file. So I'm going to do is, oops, const employees Okay, so I'm taking this file into employees and here I'm just return all employees, right? I'm, I'm, I'm returning everything just to uh, make it easy. Okay. So if I come back here and if I execute this query, I get all the first name and last name here, right? I get all the first name and last name, right? So now I can even ask for an ID. Okay. If I ask the ID, I get the ID. If I ask the city, I get the city. Sorry, sorry, not the city. Uh, it name as a nearest city. Okay, right. So that's the beauty of GraphQL server, right? For example, now thing in your re if it's a REST API, right? So now you ex it exposing um, four fields, right? So two sprints later, 
uh, you get a requirement from the customer hey I need employee department right so now what you need to do you need to go back to your microservice you need to go there and change the details to uh, return the department as well right one other thing you can do is you can return everything and ask uh, UI to get what they want but that's create two problems one uh, you send unnecessary data load through the wire second uh, it's a security risk right let's say your object has a hundred fields right if you if the only you only need four fields why are you returning all those 96 other extra fields right it create other uh, extra overhead on the wire as well as uh, ui side right so rather what graphql does is graphql give what you ask right for example now two sprint later they says we need the department as well okay so you come here and you say hey i need the department right so graphql server will send this automatically you don't have to update your microservice you don't have to redeploy that you don't have to do any backend change you just need to go to your front end and say tell what you need right so graphql always give what you want okay so there are three field level uh, decorations we can use decorators we can use with the graphql right so uh, let's I uh, let I'll explain one here, but other decorators I'll explain when we uh, after we discuss the filters, right? So we have one decorator here. Let's for example department. Okay, so let's say I have a decorator called deprecated, right? So we have three decorators: skip, include, and deprecation, right? So if, if skip says if it, if the logic is true, it will not return that field. Include is opposite of the skip. That means if the logic is true, it if it will include that fail right Depreci uh, duplicate mean you just give the warning right it doesn't do any error or something right so let's let's do that you can tell the reason here okay so i just gave a reason it's a fake reason right don't worry about the reason right so i'm going to demonstrate this how this works Right, so now if you come back here, if you uh, refresh this, right, so when you ask the department, you don't have to refresh actually, when you ask the department, now it's, it's you, you can see it, there's underline here, that means is a playground even indicate this is going to deprecate, right, so when you uh, move the mouse over there, it, it shows like a tool tip saying since the company moving to SBU structure, we are removing global designation, whatever the description we gave there, right, also, if you go to schema, you can see here in when the schema definition it shows this one, right? So department. So this is uh, this is the this is going to deprecate because of this reason, right? So you can tell, okay, uh, since we are going to deprecate this, you can use this property and that property and so and so forth. Okay. So this is how we can inject the data and we can uh, deprecate to do whatever, right? But now you realize we don't need to inject the data like this, right? And also, we have a problem. So when I ask this data, it will give you tons of data, right? I have a thousand employees in my uh, database, so it returned all the thousand, right? So see, but I may need a particular employee with the employee ID 80 or employee ID 82 or something like that, right? So maybe I need uh, employees from a particular department, right? Maybe employees from training department or maybe employees from legal department, right? So I need to use filters to my data, right? That will be next step, right? So keep in mind, we are going to learn GraphQL in deeper and deeper so you can think to replace your REST services or you can mix GraphQL into your architecture to use with the REST services. So I'm, we are going to go deeper. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe So and also uh, like and follow my Instagram and Facebook. You can get instant notification from there as well And also sometime you can ask questions and I might find a time to answer for you then Stay safe. Take care